Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will read the biography of Carl Milles from my book Medals and Their Artists. A book which for the first time ever fully describes the medal production of the following artists. Carl Eld, Erik Grate, Brorjort, Carl Milles and Bruno Liljefors. The book also contains biographies for all the artists and a large selection of contemporary descriptions from newspapers which I have studied at the Royal Library's newspapers archive. In addition to the tour of Millesgården in Lidingö in Stockholm, I will simultaneously show all the medals produced by Carl Milles during the reading. However, I will not give a detailed description of these medals in this video, but I will return to this in upcoming separate videos. During the time I wrote the book, I spent a lot of time in the Royal Library's newspapers archives to study contemporary daily newspapers to see how the contemporaries perceived and described Carl Milles and the events connected to the various medal issues. I have also spent some time at the National Archives to study the Mint's accounts and the various orders received there regarding various medals issues. All texts are translated into both German and English and integrated into the book in order to attract the Swedish as well as the international audience. All the artists described have also stayed for shorter or longer periods abroad and have been active in international contexts and exhibitions and thus achieved success outside Sweden's borders, which is not least the case for Carl Milles, who lived and worked in the USA for a long time. In addition to the historical, artistic and aesthetic value that Carl Milles medals offers, they are also in most cases rare or very rare with a few exceptions, and therefore offer the collector an excellent opportunity to acquire greatly undervalued and today poorly appreciated works of miniature. In my book, I describe in detail all the editions, variants, metals and their rarities, and in this way I present a complete review and illumination of a dormant collecting area with the potential for the collector with a mind for optimization from a financial perspective. Carl Emil Wilhelm Andersson, later Carl Milles, was born on June 23, 1875 at Örby Farm in Lagga Parish near Uppsala. Carl's parents were Emil Andersson and Valborg Alfild Maria Tissell. In addition to his military career, his father had also an artistic interest and took a one-year break in his military training to travel to Rome, devoting himself to art studies, to painting and museum visits. After the study trip to Rome, Emil returned to the military and then served in the French Foreign Legion in Algeria and also in the French Army in the French-German War of 1870-71. Emil Andersson was often called Mille by his acquaintances, which gave him the idea of a more interesting family name than Andersson, namely the name Milles. His mother died in childbirth in 1879 when Carl was only four years old and this traumatic event was only the first of several trials that awaited him during his childhood and adolescence. Carl had an older sister, the later well-known sculptor Ruth Milles and his brother Stig Milles, who by the way was one of the pioneers behind the sports cabin area Trolldalen on Lidingö. Carl also had a half-brother, the architect Evert Milles. The brother and architect Evert Milles was Carl's permanent partner and was hired early by him to design Milles Gordon's modifications and extensions. The first major work for Evert Milles was to design the colonnade, or loggia as it was called, which was facing the plot boundary to the northeast. In 1885, Carl began his studies at Jacobs High School in Stockholm. However, he had a poor focus and the studies did not go well. His studies was more and more neglected and finally he was taken out of school. And in 1892, he instead got to work in the field of carpentry. In parallel with the carpentry training, Carl participated in the Higher School of Art and Design's evening school. From 1895, he participated full-time in the school. 
In 1897, he received a scholarship from the Swedish Handicraft Association and, with help of this money, he traveled to Paris to continue his artistic studies. Carl stayed for several years in Paris and made a living as an ornament carver. The extra workload affected his time and abilities to study, but his talent, hard work and impressive ability to acquire knowledge on his own meant that he nevertheless managed to produce some small format sculptures in the style of the time, with which he also gained some success. Despite the workload, he managed to get some time for studies in autonomy at a called the Beaux Arts, where he, like other students, were strongly affected by the French sculptor Auguste Rodin. Two years later, in 1899, Carl participated for the first time at the Salon d'Artistes Français, where he also managed to get the honorable mention for his exhibited sculptures. Shortly afterwards, in 1900, at the World's Fair in Paris, Exposition Universelle, he received the silver medal for his sculptures. In Paris, his artistic identity was also transformed when he changed his surname from Anderson, inspired by his father's nickname Mille, to Milles. The new name also fitted better on the international arena and in the French language. Shortly after returning to Sweden, a decisive turn took place in the autumn of 1901. Milles then received a scholarship from the Academy of Fine Arts in Stockholm which enabled him his first study trip to Munich. In 1902, after a competition that had been announced in 1901, he was commissioned to create the Esten Sture Monument in Uppsala. The Esten Sture Monument attracted a lot of attention and is considered Miller's major breakthrough as a sculpture. His study trips continued in 1903. He also visited Netherlands and Belgium, where he was inspired by the folklore and became acquainted with older as well as newer art. Not least, Constantin Meunier's sculptures influenced his views. Thanks to the breakthrough with the Stensture monument, Milles became known and quickly received several Swedish orders. In 1903, he was commissioned to perform three different decorations for the Royal Dramatic Theatre in Stockholm. He sculpted several face masks on the front of the building, as well as the bust of the king in the foyer. Together with Gottfried Larsson, Milles made the column bases for the eight exterior marble columns, and Milles also designed the five female figures in the central part of the front, which represented the architecture, poetry, drama, sculpture and painting. He also executed 10 different theatre masks on the lamp posts. The Royal Dramatic Theatre was inaugurated on February 18th in 1908. In 1904 he returned to Germany where he settled for a time in Munich and there renewed the previously initiated acquaintance with the German sculptural tradition. The following year he married the painter Olga Graner from Graz in Austria whom he got to know during the years of study in Paris. In a love letter from the time he used the expression Mein kleines Hasselnuss, which becomes a slightly funny interpretation of Miller's not entirely correct German. The couple, Karl and Olga Miller's, became inseparable friends for life. However, their marriage was completely childless. In 1906, Karl and Olga Miller's returned to Sweden and made, among other things, the first version of Gustav Vasa statue for the Nordic Museum, where Olga Meles was responsible for and carried out the color scheme of the statue. The next two years, however, became a period of severe illness and he was sick after problems with his lungs, during which he mostly stayed in Italy and Austria. It would turn out that Meles' health was not so strong, which resulted in his work throughout his life being interrupted on a regular basis by longer or short, shorter periods of illness. After returning home in 1906, Karl and Olga Milles bought the plot of land on Herseludsklippan above Vertan on Lidingö. Their ambition was to create a home with associated art studios. The building was designed by the architect and fellow students from the technical school, Karl M. Bengtsson, and was built in 1908. In the following decades, it was expanded and he developed Miles Gordon in collaboration with his half-brother, 
the architect Evert Milles. During the period 1911 to 1913, the first extension was erected. It was an open-air studio in the form of a loggia, a covered colonnade, which aimed to improve Carl's working environment. After a while, a clear and characteristic style of his expression crystallized and Miller's artistic style was transformed. Some periods were characterized and inspired by ancient Greek culture. Silhouettes are a distinguished feature of Miller's floating figures on high pedestals. The first decades in Sweden therefore constituted of a significant period in Miller's artistic development. During this initial period, until about 1917, he worked mainly in granite. The choice of material later changed and then granite only occurred as a decorative element in the sculptures. In 1913, the sea god was completed and then a whole series of sculptures until 1931. 1917 is a turning point in his artistic creativity when he wanted to cut the ties with his past and, tragically enough, destroyed a large part of his earlier works. The successes followed one after another. At the Baltics exhibition in Malmö in 1914 and later at the anniversary exhibition in Gothenburg in 1923, in both cases, Milles got to play a central and prominent role. At the Baltic exhibition, various works of art with dance motives, dancing female, two dancing females and dancer was shown for the first time. As usual, the success was followed by critical voices where ideals and changes of all truths and perceptions were disturbed. Some art critics, patrons and other so-called experts expressed their indignation. Among those that can be mentioned, art collector Klaus Foreus, on one occasion when he analyzed the great artists of the time, wrote that Milles was a great baby of his time. The Baltic exhibition was an art industry and handicraft exhibition that took place during the period 15th of May to 4th of October in 1914. The initiative for the exhibition was taken in Malmö Industrial Association and it was the architect Ferdinand Boberg who was commissioned to design the exhibition area together with the Crown Princess Margaret. The Baltic Sea States at this time, Sweden, Denmark, Germany and Russia were represented. The exhibition became a great success with over one million visitors. It displayed the latest in technology, industrial products and design. The art department was the largest ever organized in the Nordic countries and contained over 3,000 exhibited art objects. Milne's first medal was the execution as a tribute to Isaac Gustav Claesson in 1916. Claesson was a prominent Stockholm architect and also a professor of architecture at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. And during the 1890s, he was considered one of the great innovators in architecture. Isaac Gustav Claesson was also the architect behind the Nordic Museum. Sweden's largest cultural historical museum, which was built between 1889 and 1907. However, the first submitted proposal for the reverse of the medal was rejected, as the appointed committee considered that it did not agree with the already determined inscription. The proposal depicts a kneeling youth personifying architecture, holding a model of the Nordic Museum in his hands. There are only two known specimens of the first proposal for the reverse of the medal, both single-sided without obverses. Of these, one belonged to Torsten Laurin's collection, the other is in the Royal Coin Cabinet in Stockholm. The completed and approved medal for Claesson's 16th birthday in 1916 depicts on the obverse Isaac Gustav Claesson's bust in high relief, wearing a jacket with a raised shirt collar. Above the picture the name Isaac Gustav Claesson and on each side the date of his birthday. On the reverse, a naked man walking, sewing, basket around his hip 
and the inscription Builder Sower. The medal is signed C. M. Milles, 1916, Fek, all sunk in the edge to the right. Fek is the short for Latin Fesit, which means he did it. In 1919, Milles began to work on his second medal, this time for the 16-year-old friend and artistic role model, Werner von Heidenstam, who would have been 60 years old on the 6th of July the same year. However, for various reasons, the medal was only completed in May 1921, and in the same year the first specimen was handed over to Werner von Heidenstam, and this specimen is now exhibited in Övra Lids museum. The medal is cast and weighs just above 500 gram and has a diameter of 124 millimeters. The medal is extremely rare and I'm aware of only five specimens in public and private collections. On the obverse of the medal, Haydenstam's left-facing portrait is depicted. And on the reverse, an Altar with a blazing fire is depicted, as well as an inscription in Greek, which translates into To the Unknown God. The 400th anniversary of Gustav Vasa's entry into Stockholm in 1523. In December 1922, Carl Milles received the order for Gustav Vasa's medal from Sporong, which is also the beginning of their collaboration. The Gustav Vasa medal was also to be the first of Milles' struck medals. Previously he had only done work for cast medals such as Claesson's 60s birthday in 1916 and Haydenstam's 60s birthday in 1919. One of the initiators of the medal was Gustav Uppmark who was chairman of the Association of St. Erik and he was also on the board for the Nordic Museum. The medals are struck by Sporong and Company and issued by the Association of St. Erik in 1923. The silver medals are issued in a numbered edition of 100 specimens and the bronze medals are issued in larger numbers and appear in various different alloys of bronze, black patinated bronze, but also a few extremely rare gilt bronze medals. The purpose of the gilded bronze medals is unknown and the number of struck specimens is probably minimal as I today is only aware of a few specimens in the private market. The gilded bronze medals qualifies among other very rare Miller's medals into the group that are almost unattainable for the common collector. John Böttiger's 70th birthday, 25th of March in 1923. John Böttiger was educated at Lunds University and became a doctor of philosophy in 1880 and was secretary of the National Museum's art department in 1881 to 1886. Finally, in 1915, he became the director of the Royal Household Council Chamber and the Royal Art Collections and he stayed there until his death. Some of John Böttiger's friends, including Crown Prince Gustav Adolf, decided to present him with a medal on his 70th birthday. Carl Laurin was given the responsibility of contacting Carl Milles for the assignment. The project with the medal had been brought up quite late and getting a medal ready for Böttiger's birthday was of course unthinkable. In September, Carl Milles finally finished the medal, which was then left for casting at Hermann Bergman's art foundry. On the obverse of the medal, Böttiger's left-facing image is depicted, as well as the legend John Böttiger. On the reverse, a woman is depicted facing forward, wearing a loincloth, bare-chested in half-kneeling position, with outstretched hands. In the background, an antique loom. At the right hand, a shuttle and below the woman a flower. In the legend, historians vevnad tolkad bevarad. On the medal, the following edge lettering can be read. To John Böttiger on his 70th birthday, March 25 from France 1923. The medal is extremely rare and at the moment only two specimens are known in private and public collections. The year 1923 is a busy year for Carl Milles and the medal production occupies a large part of his artistic time. Throughout the year, the Gothenburg Medal were discussed, 
where several proposals were put forward that were rejected. In the spring, Gustav Vasa medal was produced and soon after that, the Böttiger medal. In September, the order for the Nordstedts medal was placed. This new order was for a medal for the book publisher P.A. Nordstedt & Sönes 100-year anniversary, which is Sweden's oldest still operating book publisher. In this case too, the initiators were the Larim brothers, both of whom belonged to the publisher's management. This time the medal was produced in record time and already in November 1923 it was finished. The medals were struck in bronze, but one specimen was struck in silver for Torsten Laurin's collection. This only known specimen in silver, which was previously part of Torsten Laurin's collection, is now part of Miles Gordon's collection. On the obverse of the medal, Five portraits of the book publisher's founding fathers and other directors are depicted. In the center, the book publisher's founder P.A. Nordstedt, and to the right of him, Carl Nordstedt, to the left, Gösta Laurin. In the top row, on the left, G.B.A. Holm, and on the right, Konrad Karlsson. On both sides of the portraits, the years 1823 to 1923, regarding the publisher's 100-year anniversary. On the reverse of the medal, the company's building on Riddarholmen in Stockholm. In the foreground, stylized waves. On top, two books. On one, which bears the inscription NS. In the legend, P.A. Nordstedt and Söner. The anniversary exhibition in Gothenburg in 1923. When the exhibition closed on October 13th, there had been 4.2 million visitors. Unfortunately, the exhibition was a financial catastrophe and the deficit was a whopping 4.4 million Swedish crowns, which led to the city of Gothenburg having to borrow the entire sum to cover the deficit. The Jubilee exhibition's poor finances affected Gothenburg's economy for many years to come. To the anniversary exhibition, commemorative medals were ordered from Carl Milles. The idea to have the Gothenburg exhibition's commemorative medals made by Carl Milles arose early. As early as in January 1922, Milles was contacted for the commission to produce an exhibition medal. The initiators for this medal were Henning Bayer, the exhibition's general secretary, and Axel Romdahl, its art curator. The plans for the Gothenburg medal was initially to produce them by casting. This could seem natural, as Milles had previously produced only two medals, both cast, for Claesson in 1916 and Haydenstam in 1919, before he received the commission for the anniversary exhibition in Gothenburg. However, the desire to have a large number of medals cast did not match the budget, as cast medals are considerably more expensive to produce than to strike them. Milles worked on various medal proposals that were repeatedly rejected, which severely delayed the production. Finally, four months after the exhibition had ended, the medal was issued in March of 1924. The original purpose, among other things, to award one gold medal to the king in connection with the inauguration, was never realized, as the idea to sell the silver and bronze medals to the visitors in connection with the fair. Perhaps... The delayed production was a contributing factor to the very limited silver edition. The medals were struck in four gold specimens, 50 silver specimens and 1800 bronze specimens. Of the struck and distributed gold specimens, I only know of one confirmed specimen, namely the gold medal that is part of the king's medal collection. The silver medal is very rare and clearly undervalued in the market, while the bronze medals are one of few Milles medals that still appear with some regularity in the market. On the obverse of the medal, a crowned walking right-facing lion is depicted carrying a sword and shield with three crowns representing Gothenburg City coat of arms. Under the shield, the year 1923 for the exhibition year, in the legend, the text, Jubileumsutställning, Göteborg. On the reverse, four walking gods are depicted walking to the left, Minerva, Vulcan, Mercury and Neptune, bearing their respective attributes. 
Minerva wearing a helmet and ancient clothes, Mercury only helmeted and, like Vulcan and Neptune, completely naked. At the bottom a dolphin, along the edge is the artist's name in sunk and relief, C. Milles. Around the same time, Milles began the work on the sculpture Europe and the Bull, which is a bronze fountain on Stora Torget in Halmstad, erected in 1926. The motif is taken from Greek mythology and is about when Zeus, in the guise of a bull, abducts the princess Europe. Then followed the Folkungabrunnen in Linköping, erected in the years 1924 to 1927. The statue is inspired by Heidenstam's novel The Folkunga Tree. The central figure in the sculpture is Folke Filbyter, who, according to the legend, was the ancestor of the Folkunga family. Linköping is claimed to be the family's place of origin and the statue of Folke Filbyter in the city was therefore considered appropriate when erecting the statue. Then the bronze sculpture representing the sea god Poseidon was erected between 1925 and 1930. The sculpture stands on Götaplatsen in the center of Gothenburg and was inaugurated in 1931. The seven-meter-high statue stands on a snail-shaped elevation in the well basin. Below the waterline in the well are crabs, algae, corals, lobsters, fish, clams and shells. In the right hand, Poseidon holds a water-spouting fish and in his left a shell. On his head, he wears a stylized shell as a headdress. The Poseidon statue is one of Gothenburg's most famous landmarks. The Orpheus Group, which is also a fountain sculpture, was erected between 1926 and 1936. It stands in front of the concert hall on Hötorget in Stockholm. Orpheus is the one who gets to represent the art of music in Greek mythology. The Orpheus Group, like so many other works by Milles, has a long and problematic history and the finished statue differed considerably from the proposal he submitted as his competition contribution to the Danelius Foundation in 1925. What is clearly evident in these larger wells or water sculpture is an energetic way of expression in combination with a solid construction, which also includes the well basin. The water and its water cascades are used as compositional elements and the hall is designed with the surrounding architecture. Milles appears here as a worthy heir to Bernini and the tradition of the Italian Baroque fountain, a legacy he managed in a characteristic and highly personal way. Among other central works from the 1920s can be mentioned The Solsångaren, a bronze sculpture that was inaugurated in October 1926, and is located at the far end of Strömparterren in Stockholm. The statue is a tribute to Esaias Tegner on the behalf of the Swedish Academy and portrays Tegner's poem Song to the Sun. Another iconic sculpture is Gustav Vasa in the central hall of the Nordic Museum, which received its final version in painted wood in 1922-1927. In 1929, together with his student, the sculptor Alex Wallenberg, he executed scenery and costumes for Asculus Agamemnon at the Konserthustheatern in Stockholm. The 1920s was thus an intense period for Milles with the creation of a series of monumental sculptures and also participation in several competitions. Stockholm's Concert Hall was inaugurated on April 7, 1926, with an opening speech by Crown Prince Gustav Adolf. But the background to the Concert Hall was that, already at the end of the 1860s, ideas about a separate house for the symphonic music in Stockholm had been formulated. In 1902, the Concertförening was founded, which had to conduct its musical activities in temporary premises, and in 1917, the Konserthusföreningen had found a suitable plot of land at Hötorget in Stockholm to build a musical house. In 1920, an architectural competition was announced for the new concert hall, which was finally won by the architect Ivar Tengblom. The concert hall in Stockholm began to be built in April 1923 and, as I earlier mentioned, was inaugurated on April 7, 1926. 
Stockholms Concert Hall occupies a special position in the relationship and collaboration between the architect Ivar Tengblom and the artist Carl Milles. Milles had to carry out several major works at the concert hall, including a large relief above the Great Hall's podium. In addition, he designed four sculptures representing figures that symbolize music and are placed in the niches on the podium in the main hall. When the concert hall was almost completed, its building committee decided that an inauguration medal would be produced and distributed in connection with the festivities during the inauguration. The commission was handed over by Teng Blom, naturally enough, to Carl Milles. When I study newspapers in the newspaper archives at the Royal Library, I can read in Svenska Dagbladet from the 8th of April 1926 that at the inauguration of the concert hall, the Stockholm Concert Hall Foundation was awarding five gold medals to the following persons. Prince Eugen, the lawyer Erik Lidfors, the district governor Walter Philipsson, the consul general Josef Sachs and the director general Ivar Tengblom. At the inauguration, in addition to the gold medals, a small number of silver and bronze medals were awarded. As for the silver and bronze medals, I completely lack information about who received them and in what numbers they were minted and distributed. Possibly the silver specimens were given to visiting dignitaries and the bronze specimens to the members of the Concert Hall Foundation. The silver medals are extremely rare and in my survey I have noted only one privately owned specimen from this occasion. The bronze medals are also very rare and of which I have noted only a few specimens in survey. On January 26, 1973, the concert hall was reopened after much needed refurbishment. King Gustav Adolf and Queen Christina, former Prime Minister Olof Palme and Minister of Education Ingvar Karlsson were present at the inauguration. For the reopening of the concert hall, four specimens were struck in gold, eight specimens in silver and 365 specimens in bronze respectively. The silver medals are extremely rare and very rarely found in the market. Also, the bronze medals are very rare and difficult to find. On the obverse of the medal, a naked, kneeling young man is depicted playing the strings of a lyre with the fingers of one hand. The other arm is raised to the sky. In the legend we can read, Holy is the lyre that releases the imprisoned. The artist's signature, C. Milles, in sunken relief at the knee, just below the ground line, symbolizing the globe. On the reverse, the Stockholm Concert Hall is depicted, and below the building, the year in Latin text, Anno 1926. For the new inauguration in 1973, the same dice were used as for the inauguration in 1926. The later medals from 1973 have a slightly different surface finish compared to the editions from 1926. The silver medals are also stamped with the year on the edge. Werner von Heidenstam's 17th birthday on July 6, 1929. During Miller's busiest period, he also received a series of commissions for various medals. In conjunction with his friend Heidenstam's 70th birthday, he received a commission to produce a new medal, this time in a smaller format, which was also struck and is a miniature of the cast large medal that was made for Heidenstam's 60th birthday. The medals are struck in gold, silver and bronze. The gold specimen is unique and was struck in only one copy and was given by his friends to Werner von Heidenstam's as a 70th birthday present. The gold medal is now on display in Övra Lid Museum. The silver and bronze medals were minted in a very small numbers in 1929. The silver medals were struck, one for each of the donors and friends, and the bronze specimens were probably used as souvenirs in connection with the festivities. On the medals obverse, Heidenstam's left-facing laurel wreathed image is depicted, signed by the engraver, C.M. Milles, sunk along the edge to the right. On the reverse, an altar with flaming fire is depicted, as well as the inscription in Greek, translated, To the Unknown God. 
The silver medal is very rare and the bronze medal is also rare and both of these are rarely offered in the market and are today greatly undervalued collector's items with good future potential for economic development. Bergslagernas järnvägar Another medal issued during Miller's busiest period is the silver medal issued for Bergslagernas järnvägars 50th anniversary in 1929. Bergslagarnas järnvägar built the Gothenburg-Kiels Falun railway line during the 1870s. The construction project was Sweden's largest railway project of all time and was completed in 1879. Just in time for the 50th anniversary of the opening of the main track in 1929, the board decided that a medal should be issued to commemorate the event. Jalmar Wik, politician and businessman from Gothenburg, was vice president of the company and a good friend with Carl Milles. It is likely that Wik was both the creator of the idea for the medal but also the one who suggested that Carl Milles should be commissioned to design the commemorative medal for the company. On May 13, 1929, it was decided to strike the silver medals, which were minted in an edition of 3000 specimens. In the Falu County newspaper from December 3rd, 1929, we can read the following. The silver medal was awarded to all personnel who had been in service for at least one year, as well as to retired executives, and further to some related authorities. However, I have not been able to find any information about striking in other metals. But from preserved specimens, we know that at least one specimen was struck in gold and very few numbers in bronze. At the Jubilee, the king was probably invited and then received the only minted gold specimen, which today is part of the king's medal collection. As for the bronze specimens, it is uncertain for what purpose they were minted and what they were used for. Perhaps they were samples that were exhibited before the actual minting of silver medals began. The bronze medal were issued in a red original case with gold printed text on top of the lid with the Bergslagernas järnvägars symbol. On the obverse of the medal, a stylized mountain landscape is depicted through which a railway track runs in horizontal direction over a waterfall and into a tunnel. The chemical signs for gold, iron, copper, mercury and silver are scattered in the landscape. Signed, C. Milles sunk along the edge lower right. On the reverse, the emblem of Bergslagernes järnvägar is depicted in the center. Two crossed sledgehammers and the signs for copper and iron flanked by the years 1879 and 1929. The silver medals have edge lettering, 50 years railway connection, Bergslag and Westerhavet, as well as Sporong and silver stamp. The medals were issued with a paper certificate and in the blue case with the printed text on the lid. The silver medals issued for the 50th anniversary of Bergslagernas järnvägar in 1929 belongs to one of the few Milles medals that appear reasonably regularly in the market and constitutes a good starting point for collecting Milders medals. Tragically, I can state today that the vast majority of the originally large minted edition of silver medals were probably melted down during the great silver rush of the 1970s and 80s, which has the effect that the once very common medals has become considerably rarer today. In the years 1920 to 1931, Carl Milles was employed as a professor of modeling at the Royal Academy of Arts in Stockholm. Milles now also began to be noticed abroad and in 1927 he had an extensive exhibition at the Tate Gallery in London and the following years in Hamburg and Lübeck. With the successes, the increasingly critical crowd also grew. Some art critics regarded him as the country's internationally most prominent sculptor. No living Nordic artist is as valued in Europe and America as Milles. While others were significantly more negative in their criticism, and this applied to both art critics and fellow sculptors.
jealousy and opposition led to him being accused that his sculptures lacked their own character and were also pure imitations of style. The criticism became increasingly more aggressive and person-oriented, and Milles therefore became a grateful victim for writers, booksellers and newspaper cartoonists. The personal attacks and the debates in the press put more and more strain on Milles' sensitive artistic soul. After the international successes, not at least after the Tate Gallery, the idea of emigrating was renewed. The increasingly less inspiring home environment, together with the fact that Olga Meles did not enjoy Sweden so much, ultimately contributed to the decision to move from Sweden. Meles also had many assignments in the United States and also received an initial invitation to take up the professorship of the newly formed Cranbrook Academy of Art outside Detroit. However, he declined this first offer. Aviator Medal in Memory of Fallen Swedish Aviators The Aviator Medal is intimately connected with Carl Milles and his Aviator Monument that stands on Karlaplan in Stockholm. The monument was completed in 1931. The sculpture was a gift from the Swedish Aeronautical Society in memory of Swedish aviation pioneers. As early as in 1917, Milles was approached and asked if he was interested in creating a monument to honor the Swedish pilots who fell during the First World War. Milles accepted this assignment and later submitted several proposals that the society rejected, but in 1927 the society finally approved Milles' proposal. The sculpture depicts a large eagle with outstretched wings ready to fly away. Originally, there was an openable chamber in the monument. In this chamber, there was an open urn in which medals were placed for each fallen Swedish aviator. This tradition ended in the 1940s, and since then the memory of all fallen Swedish aviators is honored in the Air Force Memorial Hall, located at the Three Weapons Building on Gärdet in Stockholm. According to Ulf Abel's dissertation from 1980, in 1929 Milles was also commissioned by the Aero Society to design this medal, the Aviator Medal, which, according to the same source, was completed in 1932 and struck by Sporong and Company in silver and bronze. On the obverse of the medal, a dead youth floating upwards with outstretched arms is depicted, surrounded by four stylized rays, signed by the artist Carl Milles in sunken relief along the lower right edge. On the reverse, along the left edge, an olive branch is depicted. The rest of the medal is intended for name inscription. All existing bronze specimens I have registered in my survey are without engraved names. The medal is extremely rare and very difficult to find for sale in the collector's market. Of the silver medals, I only know of one privately owned specimen which is engraved with the name of the fallen aviator. The medal is stamped 1928 and awarded to H. Fife posthumously. H. Fife died in 1917 during the First World War. Now I will once again return to the main story of Carl Milles. In 1929, in connection with his first visit to the United States, he accepted a new offer for professorship, and in 1931 the couple moved to the Detroit suburb of Bloomfield Hills in the state of Michigan. Here was the Crownbrook Foundation, which had been founded a few years earlier by the philanthropist and newspaper man George Booth. In 1926, the Cranbrook Academy of Art was inaugurated where the Finlander and close friend of Milles, Eliel Saarinen, was the teacher of architecture. Between the years 1931 and 1951, Milles held the professorship of sculpture at the Cranbrook Academy of Art. His success continued in the United States and an exhibition of his work was organized in St. Louis, His sculptures were also at display in Detroit, Cleveland and New York and there at the Brooklyn Museum, all which contributed to the continued increase of awareness of Milles' art in the United States. In 1931, Milles underwent a successful eye operation 
against threatening blindness. The larger commissions in the USA included the Peace Monument, which is a sculpture in Onyx, which was erected between 1932 and 1936 in the City Hall of St. Paul, Minnesota. Millers also designed the bronze gates to the Treasury Department in Harrisburg, the Meeting of Rivers Fountain in St. Louis in 1940. The most extensive sculpture, however, was the Fountain of Faith at the Falls Church Cemetery outside Washington, D.C. In 1936, Milles Gordon was converted into a foundation that was handed over as a gift to the Swedish people and then came to serve as a museum. Somewhat later, in 1948, the Swedish state bought Carl Milles' antique collection, which was then moved from Cranbrook to Milles Gordon. In 1945, Milles became an American citizen. With the Second World War ending in Europe on May 7, 1945, when Germany unconditionally surrendered on all fronts, the couple could now return to Europe for a summer visit. In 1951, after 20 years in the USA, Carl and Olga Milles moved back to Europe, where they lived in Rome during the winter and at Milles Gordon during the summer. After returning home, Milles' artistic work was mainly located in Rome, in the studio at Porta San Pancrazio at the Giannicolo. The American Academy of Art had provided the studio and resident at his disposal, free of charge, which he was allowed to use for the rest of his life. The Wieck Medal, Jalmar Wieck, 1952. At the end of 1949, Jalmar Wieck left his board position as chairman of the board of Röska Konstlöts Museum and in an extra meeting on December 16, 1949, the board decided to institute and have a medal produced, the so-called Wiekska plakett, in grateful memory of Jalmar Wieck's deed. It was only natural that Carl Milles was commissioned to produce this medal as Wieck and Milles had known each other for a long time. It is also likely that Axel Romdahl, who was also on the board, was the broker of the commission. In an exchange of letters between Milles and Romdahl dated January 3, 1949, we can read that Milles will try to start the work when he visits Sweden during the summer of 1950, and where the proposal with the weak plaque had already been approved by the board. And finally, after several years of delays, Milles completed the medal, and the first specimen was cast in bronze at Hermann Bergman's art foundry in 1952. After the casting, the medal was patinated black and provided with edge lettering. The first specimen was awarded to Jalmar Wieck on December 11, 1952, for long and faithful service and extraordinary efforts to promote the museum's activities. The board also decided that the Wiekska plaque would in the future be awarded to other people as an award for extraordinary contributions to the benefit of the museum. On the obverse of the medal, Jalmar Wieck's right-facing bust wearing a jacket is depicted. Carl Milles' signature is in sunken relief along the edge to the right. On the reverse, the text, year 1950, owned Röska Konstslöjd Museum, Jalmar Wieck, this medal intended to be given to promoters of the museum as a sign of recognition. In the middle of the medal, a small dolphin. Of this extremely rare medal, we are aware of only six specimens in public and private collections. The criticism in Sweden had subsided considerably during Miller's absence and he was met on his return to his home country with warmth and friendship, which was radically changed from how it was 20 years earlier when the couple had emigrated to the United States. In a series of radio interviews made in 1952, Miller's talked about his various episodes in life, which helped to strengthen his popularity in Sweden again. The summers were spent at Milles Gården, where work on the building continues, the lower and larger terrace was built, as well as a small one-story house, which in the last years was the artist's home when he stayed in Sweden. New large commissions were given to Milles during his last years of life, where some of the most significant works of art are St. Martin, The Hand of God, Man and Pegasus, and Aganippe Fountain where the latter was erected after his death in 1956 in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. 
Carl Mildes was named honorary doctor at the Stockholm University in 1953 and the ceremony took place in May in the Blue Hall in Stockholm. During the last months of Carl Mildes life, the World Philatelic Exhibition in Stockholm 1955, Stockholmia 55, was organized, which was held from 1st to 10th of July 1955. The exhibition that was held at Liljevalls Art Gallery was a great success and was organized by the Swedish Philatelic Association and the Swedish Post Office. In total, the exhibition was visited by 35,000 visitors and the gates of the busy exhibition closed on Sunday, July 10th at 10 p.m. Exhibition general was Gunnar Sandberg and George Mesinski was chairman of the jury. It was decided that award medals in four different denominations would be produced for this purpose. In gold, in 43 mm diameter, and in gold, gilt, silver, silver and bronze respectively in 56 mm diameter. The medal was ordered by the board and the assignment went to Carl Milles. The medal was completed in the autumn of 1954 and ready for production in November. The medal was struck by the Royal Mint on Kungsholmen. This was also the last medal executed by Carl Milles, who by this time was very old and at the time suffered from increasing senility. He died shortly after the exhibition ended on September 19th in 1955. A total of 386 exhibitors participated in various classes, both outside and inside the competition. Prize medals were awarded in the different denominations in the competition classes. Sweden performed very well during this exhibition and in the Swedish Philatelic Journal's September issue from 1955, we can read the following. The reign of medals at Stockholmia 55. The jury, which had to review and assess the exhibits at Stockholmia 55, awarded a total of three Grand Prix, 20 gold medals, 60 gilded silver medals, 107 silver medals, 84 bronze medals. A Grand Prix and five gold medals went to Swedish collectors. There was a great deal of news coverage in the daily press and Svenska Dagbladet from July 10th, 1955, described how medals and prizes were awarded on Saturday evening in the Stockholm City Hall and which Swedish collectors received them. Of the gold medals, five went to Sweden, Consul General Herbert Diden, Engineer Åke Jönsson, Director Joel Olsson and Hugo Sjöberg were awarded for Swedish collections, while Equestrian Master Gösta von Möller received his gold medal for a Finland collection. And then the article continued to list the winners of gilt silver medals, silver medals, bronze medals and participant diplomas. The gold medals are extremely rare today, but also the other medals in gilt silver, silver and bronze are very rare and rarely offered on the collector's market. The numbers of medals struck were very small as they were only minted to be awarded as prize medals at the exhibition. On the obverse of the medal, a naked male is running to the left, holding a letter in his right hand and a letter and a flower in his left hand. Behind the central figure, a smaller naked male figure is running to the right. On the top, three stars and part of a crescent moon. At the bottom, the upper part of a male figure holding in the right hand a letter and above the arm a lightning bolt traversing from right to left. The medal is signed by the artist C. Milles in Sank and Relief. On the reverse, the text in ten lines. Life, thought, word, letter, paper and pen, stamp, train, boat, flight, receiver, answer, intelligence. And in Sank and Relief along the left edge, the text, stamp of Sweden 100 years. And along the right edge, Stockholmia 55, signed by the artist C. Milles in Sank and Relief. To return to the story of Carl Milles and his last days in life. At 3 p.m., just two hours before his death and still vital and lively, Carl Milles was walking outside on Milles Gården in conversation with the sculptor Per Palm. 
Carl Milles spent the evening before with his family and with his good friend and artist Axel Wallenberg. They talked about death, naturally enough, and Milles wondered what would come next. They spoke of immortality and life after death. Carl Milles believed that there must be a continuation of life, a link between the birth and death. Thoughts of this kind, when life is nearing its end, can be quite natural. A preparation and acceptance of the approach of death. Here on Milles Gordon is where his long, active life ended on September 19, 1955. Carl is buried in the Milles Gordon's Little Forest Chapel together with his wife Olga, who died later in 1967. You have now listened to the life of Carl Milles and his medal production with great patience and hopefully also great pleasure. In this video I have only outlined the medals, but I will describe and in more detail all of his medal issues in separate video episodes later on. I hope you find this video interesting and to help others with a historical and or numismatic interest, watch this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. It is free to subscribe and you don't commit to anything nor will you receive any unwanted emails or offers from me. And you can whenever you want end your subscription. By subscribing, liking and sharing you help YouTube's and Google's algorithms to rank up this video and thus make it easier for others with a similar interest to view this video. Also make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified when I publish new video on YouTube. Thank you for watching.